Welcome to an example in which we'll verify that two given functions form a fundamental set of solutions to a linear second order homogeneous differential equation. So our goal here is to verify that y sub one of x and y sub two of x form a fundamental set of solutions to the differential equation on the given interval and we also want to form the general solution. So let's start with a quick review of what that means. If y sub one and y sub two are solutions to the given differential equation and the Ronskian is not equal to zero, then we can say that y sub one and y sub two are a fundamental set of solutions, and we can use y sub one and y sub two to form the general solution given here. So there's three parts to this verification. We'll first verify that y sub one of x is a solution, then we'll verify that y sub two of x is a solution, and then finally we'll verify that the Ronskian does not equal zero over the entire interval and if all of these are true, then we verified that y sub one and y sub two form a fundamental set of solutions, and from there we can form the general solution. Okay, so to begin, we want to verify that y sub one of x is a solution. So looking at the differential equation, notice how we also have to find y prime and y double prime. Let's go ahead and just say that y equals e to the power of x divided by two, which is the same as one half x, and therefore y prime it's going to be equal to e to the power of x divided by two times one half applying the chain rule, or one half e to the x divided by two. And then y double prime is going to be equal to one half times e to the power of x divided by two times one half, or one fourth e to the power of x divided by two. And I'll perform substitution into the original differential equation. So we would have four times y double prime, one fourth e to the power of x divided by two, minus four times y prime, which is one half e to the power of x divided by two, and then plus y, which is e to the power of x divided by two. We want to verify this is equal to zero. So here we'd have e to the power of x divided by two, this would be minus two e to the power of x divided by two, plus e to the x divided by two equals zero. And we can quickly see that the left side is going to equal zero. If we add the first and third term, that would be two times e to the power of x divided by two, and then minus two e to the power of x divided by two would give us zero. So this tells us that y sub one of x is a solution to the given differential equation. And now we'll verify that y sub two of x is also a solution. So here's y sub two of x. Let's go ahead and again just call it y. Notice to find y prime, we'll have to apply the product rule as well as the chain rule. So the derivative would be x times the derivative of e raised to the power of x divided by two. That would give us x times e to the power of x divided by two times one half, or one half x e to the x divided by two, plus the second function, the exponential, times the derivative of x, which is just one, so plus e to the power of x divided by two. And y double prime, again we'll have to apply the product rule and chain rule to find the derivative of the first term. So we have one half x times e to the power of x divided by two times one half, or one fourth, x e to the x divided by two plus the exponential times the derivative of one half x, which is one half, so we have one half e to the power of x divided by two plus the derivative of the second term, which would be one half e to the x divided by two. Notice how we have two like terms here, so our second derivative would just be one fourth x e to the x divided by two plus e to the x divided by two. And I'll perform substitution using y, y prime, and y double prime. So we'll have four times y double prime, minus four times y prime, plus y, 
we want to verify this is equal to zero. So we'll first distribute to clear the parentheses. Here we'll distribute positive four, giving us x e to the x divided by two power plus four e to the power of x divided by two, and then we have minus two x e to the power of x divided by two minus four e to the power of x divided by two plus x e to the power of x divided by two. Now let's look for like terms. Well, these two terms are opposite, so that's zero. Then again, looking at the first term and last term, that would be two x e to the power of x divided by two, and then minus two x e to the power of x divided by two. So these also give us sum of zero. Verifying that y sub two is also a solution. So now we need to use y sub one and y sub two to determine the value of the Ronskin. And if that Ronskin doesn't equal zero, the two functions are linear independent and therefore form a fundamental set of solutions. So now we'll determine the Ronskin of y sub one and y sub two. So we'll have a two by two determinant where the first row will be the original functions. So we have e to the power of x divided by two, and then x e to the power of x divided by two. Remember, we already found the derivatives on the previous slides. Y sub one prime was equal to one half e to the power of x divided by two. Then y sub two prime required the product rule, which was given here. One half x e to the x divided by two power plus e raise the power of x divided by two. Now this determinant will be equal to this product minus this product. So we have e raise the power of x divided by two times this quantity here minus this product here Now when multiplying, remember we add the exponents when the bases are the same. So for this first product, we're going to have one half x and then just e to the x, since one half x plus one half x is equal to x. And then plus the second product will be e to the x. And the last product here is going to be minus one half x e to the x. Notice how the first and third terms are opposites. So this would be zero. So the Ronskin is equal to e raised to the power of x. And notice this exponential will never be zero. So now we have all the verification we need. Because y sub one and y sub two are solutions, and the Ronskin doesn't equal zero, then y sub one and y sub two are linear independent, and therefore form a fundamental set of solutions. So y sub one of x and y sub two of x form a fundamental set of solutions, which also means the general solution is y of x equals some constant c sub one times y one of x, which is e to the power of x divided by two plus some other constant, c sub two, times y sub two of x, which would be x e to the power of x divided by two. And that's going to do it for this example. I hope you found this helpful.